Hello Tubers, this is Kurt with Edibles and Exotics coming to you from Sunny Mesa, Arizona. Today is February 4th, 2023, and today I'm going to be showing you how we spring prune a golden dorset apple tree and how we propagate the cuttings so we can grow more trees and sell them or give them away or plant more or whatever you want to do. So these trees are spur and tip fruiters, so they will produce fruit on the growth tips of these branches. They have these fat fruiting spurs and they'll put out apples on those so what we're trying to get rid of is all these skinny lanky branches because what's going to happen is these branches are going to grow fruit on them and they're going to hang down and they're either going to break or they're going to hit the ground or the apples just aren't going to get big enough and you'd have to thin the apples out on each one of these skinny little branches to like one apple um, which is something you don't want. You want the, the maximum production. So I haven't pruned this thing in uh, probably about nine months. So it's ready to be pruned. And I'm going to get in here a little closer and show you exactly uh, which branches to prune and which ones to leave. So let's get started. All right, guys. So a little closer here. And you can see all these small little branches here. These guys are crossing. Any branches that are crossing, we want to take off. So we're just going to go in here and we're going to get really close and we're just going to snip these off and we're going to make a little pile. So we don't want any of these. We want to leave what's called the main scaffolding of the tree, which would be these thicker branches like this. So all these little branches, we want these guys off. All right. At the bottom here. There's a lot of little branches. So that's it guys that's how simple it is to prune these up i did this in a matter of uh two three minutes um we have no more crossing branches everything's nice and open um they need sunlight to set fruit so you got to leave an open canopy guys it's, it's got to be thinned out every year if you want apple trees to grow and, and produce a, a ton of fruit uh now is the best time to do it because it's getting ready to wake up in the next month it should start putting out a ton of buds so we want to encourage all these tiny little spurs to grow and put out fruit instead of these long, lanky branches. So we've trimmed everything up and in a, uh, about a month or so, we should be good for fruit production. And usually these guys put out fruit somewhere uh, around the middle of the summer. Off of this tree in particular, I usually harvest uh, about three five gallon buckets of apples every year. And, you know, they range in size. I try to thin them out a little bit. You know, you don't want to have uh, more than about three apples growing together in a cluster. So if you have four or five, trim off the smaller ones and let the bigger ones uh, get more nutrients and sun and, and they'll get bigger for you because you don't want little tiny golf ball sized apples. You want actual apples you could eat um, unless you're growing them for farm animals uh, to feed them or you know something like that then that's okay but you know in reality you're better off having bigger apples less apples but bigger apples better quality they taste better they're sweeter and uh they don't rot as easily on the tree so follow me over here now and uh, i'm going to show you exactly how to propagate these guys all right guys i apologize i had some technical difficulties while filming and i uh, lost some footage so i'm gonna show you exactly how I did this without doing it. Um, so I got all my bins with all the cuttings and uh, I separated them, uh, large cuttings and, and smaller cuttings just because they're gonna have uh, different requirements. And uh, basically what I do is I got these at the Dollar Tree. They're uh, just plastic bins. I got my perlite from uh, Home Depot, big old bag of it. And uh, I poked four holes one in each corner of the bins to allow for water drainage. I filled them up with perlite. I soaked the whole thing. And then uh, what that does is when you stab your cuttings in, it allows them to stay in place instead of just moving around. And uh, basically I, 
I did my cuttings about halfway, three quarters covered into the perlite, and then the tips are sticking up. Obviously, you want to put them in the right way. You don't want to put them in upside down. Uh, if they have a, a bud like this, it, it, it's probably just going to rot. If it's a stick like this, it might actually root out upside down, but try to keep them oriented right. And uh, basically, the, the point of the perlite is to keep the bottom of the cutting moist, not soaking wet, but moist. And since it's gritty, it allows air to flow around the cutting so you won't get mold or anything like that. And uh, basically, what you want to do with any sort of cutting or air layering is you want to make sure that whatever you're surrounding that tip with that you're trying to root is damp. So think of like a wrung out sponge. You don't want water dripping out and you want to kind of trap that moisture in there. But with these, these are going to be outside. They're going on my uh, uh, cutting rack. And uh, so these guys, I'm probably going to water, uh, depending on how dry they get, probably uh, every other day to every three days at the moment. So these guys are going to be moved to the rack and kept in complete shade. And that's basically it. I didn't use any sort of rooting hormone on these or anything like that. They're just going to sit in the shade. The temperatures are cool enough out. They should root out as long as they don't dry out on the tops. They should be fine. Uh, normally with fig cuttings, these bigger ones, I would put some uh, tree trunk sealer on it, which is like a black tar. Um, I'm probably going to do it on these bigger ones, but these little ones, uh, probably not even going to bother. I'm just going to put them on and on the rack and, and just let them do their thing. All right, guys, so we're all done uh, getting these cuttings in the bins and uh, I couldn't tell you exactly how many there are, but I could tell you there is a lot of them. So even if uh, some of them don't make it, there's no loss there, just pull them out, throw them on the ground and uh, let the soil organisms take care of them. But uh, so I got two bins right now with smaller ones and I got one bin of medium sized cuttings and these guys, like I said, I pre-soaked this perlite. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to water them again just to make sure they're good and wet, get the, the wood wet, and then they're just going to go into the shade. Uh, our temperatures are cool enough right now to where they're not going to dry out. As long as they don't get hit with direct sunlight, they should be fine. And uh, so right now we're uh, somewhere around uh, probably 40s at night and maybe 60s. 70s during the day and uh, the sun's not strong this time of year so just a, a shady spot's gonna be perfect for these guys and probably in about two three months they're probably gonna be rooted out and ready to pot up so i'm gonna show you exactly how i do that in an update video in the uh the future but uh as of now they're ready to do their thing and if you guys have any questions uh further on how to do this uh, you could ask me in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I usually respond pretty quick. Again, these are uh, golden dorset apples. Um, when you're planting apples in the valley here, uh, there's a couple of varieties. The two most popular are golden dorset and Anna. I have both. You really They say you need two varieties to cross-pollinate. Um, you really don't. You might get more fruit production if you have two varieties, like me, for instance, I have a golden dorset on the one side, and then I got an Anna apple on the other side of the yard. And I'm not sure if they're actually cross-pollinating, but I get a ton of apples. I get so many apples, I don't know what to do with them. I get sick of them. So if you're looking for apple trees, those are the two I recommend. I prefer the Anna apple. I think it, uh, I think it's a better looking tree. I think it's a little more sturdy, whereas this golden dorset, it does have a tendency to weep. Uh, if you like that sort of look, it'd be great for you. Uh, the Anna's more of an upright. It doesn't have the hanging branches like this one does. But they both produce excellent, really good, sugary, sweet fruit. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, share, tell all your friends. I hope to get a few more uh, updates out. Uh, we had some frost and uh, the big banana tree got hit with some frost, the one with the flowers. So I'm going to try to do an update on that this weekend for you too, guys. Thanks for watching.